guys, welcome back to the new episode of the Glow Beyond Podcast where we learn to live better with a skin condition. Today, we have a new friend with us. So this is Arvin. Hello. Hi. Uh, very interestingly, I met Arvin about two weeks ago. Yeah, about two weeks. Right? Yeah, and we were ago. in an event and he came up to me and said hi to me. Then when I look at him, I was like, hey, this... This guy has psoriasis on his face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be so happy. No, no, no. I mean, right? it is what it is. <laughs> he was so friendly, it was so warm, and he started introducing himself and telling me that, you know, he's been following me on Instagram. And as we talk, then I also learned that, hey, maybe he could come on this podcast to share about his experience because, interestingly, he's also an artist. Yes. All right. So, Arvin. Yo. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay. So, um, I make music. I uh, I own a record label. So this is what I do on a full time basis. Um, yeah. So basically, my music caters a lot to the Tamil scene. Mm. So Tamil music, we make a lot of hip hop, R and B, uh, and we have our own studio, uh, recording studio, and. Um, yeah, so I own a label called Goodfellas Entertainment. So this is my full time, basically. Nice. Yeah, so it's fun, la, music, <laughs> you know, mm. doing something I love. I used to be in the corporate line back in the day. Mm. I used to work for an agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was doing media planning. So media planner. Mm. Yeah, and then I decided, like, you know what? I just want to concentrate on my album. So I just decided to resign and... Yeah, I'm working on my album right now. Wow. <laughs> I think one thing that... um made me invite you to this podcast was because when you when we had a conversation i just felt that you were very open and you were very warm Thank and you. i feel like this energy on a guy is a little bit rare <laughs> <laughs> and and you told me that you were open to yeah, chat yeah. and i would just like to say thank you before we thank officially you for having yeah. start yeah <laughs> and um so being an artist hmm. and having psoriasis. Okay. So let's start with psoriasis first. Lah. Okay. okay. How did it appear in your life? Okay. How did it appear in my life? And when? When? Okay. I think I was about 14 or 15, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, see, I didn't know anything about psoriasis. Nothing. I knew nothing. So what happened was, uh, it was a normal day. I went to cut hair. And then, you know, they use the razors, right? So this guy was using the barber was using laser and then what happened was uh it sort of cut the behind of my ear. So I was like normal lah, you know, you just get a normal razor cut during a haircut, right? Like barber just accidentally cut you. Hmm. And then what happened was uh I realized that the skin was dry. It was not healing as how it's supposed to heal. Like a normal wound. It was a normal wound. Mm. And then uh, the skin texture and all that became different. Like mm. Something new to you. Something new to me. Like, I didn't know. La. I was like, what the hell is this? La? So there's uh, this one spot behind my ear. Uh, I didn't tell anybody because I didn't know. I mean, fair enough. La, I was a kid. La. I was like 14, 15 years old. I didn't know. Mm. And then what happened was, a um, few years later, uh, I just got used to it because it was just dry. I never used to put any cream on it. It was just there. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes it wasn't itchy or nothing. Mm. Once in a while, I just like peel it off. Mm. And that's about it. Okay. So it was like, oh, maybe it's just dry skin. Because at that age, that's all we know. Yeah. Yeah, dry skin, because nobody actually educates us about skin conditions and all that at that point of time. Lah. So, yeah, then what happened was uh, I got another spot here, like a really tiny spot, looked like a, a bullet wound like that. How old were you back then? Uh, it appeared. 18? 17, 18. Yeah. So what happened was uh, the, 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 the spot from here went up a bit to the scalp. Mm -hmm. So the scalp was getting a bit dry. So I still didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. No idea. So I went to this particular clinic. Mm -hmm. And um, they kind of told me to uh, take a certain cream. Mm -hmm. And when I took this cream, I asked them what it was. Uh, they said, 
they couldn't disclose to me what it was. Huh? Yeah. And at the point of time, you see, I'm a 17 year old kid. I mean, SPM and all that. Happy go lucky is like, yeah. okay, la, normal dry skin, la, the clinic giving, I just take and put, la, it's very well. It must, it must be okay, la, right? It must be okay. And, you know, it's a very well known clinic where they've got billboards everywhere and all that. So, conditioned that oh this clinic is a good clinic yes. everybody must go there you go there and you cure all kinds of skin uh, conditions yeah. so what happened was i took it and it wasn't really clearing i went back again and i said oh not clearing huh? okay uh you know what uh we have injection you want to take injection you mm. go off so i was like uh okay mm. so what happened was uh they injected my one small spot here yeah and my scalp like they injected steroids Oh, on like low. Yeah, 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 on the spots. Wow. Okay. So I didn't know. Mm. For the first week, it seemed to be going off. Okay. And then it started flaring up on my tummy. Mm. So the spot started becoming bigger after it seemed to go off. Mm. So then what happened was, uh, of course, my see, I'm the only child. Mm. And uh, my dad is a very, uh, how to say, he's a very caring person like, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, so he, he he's constant towards this, started growing like, hey, what's this, what's this and stuff like that. So then uh, we were trying creams from pharmacy and blah, blah, blah and whatnot. And we still didn't knew, I mean, we still didn't know it was psoriasis or whatsoever. So what happened was I went to another clinic and then the doctor was like, uh, this is dermatitis, dermatitis, uh, dem dem dermatitis. dermatitis or something like that. It's a term for eczema, if yeah. I'm mistaken. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, so it's in the middle of eczema and psoriasis. That's how it was explained to me. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay, when I told my dad, I, was like, I said, I think it's psoriasis. Then my dad was like, no, it's dermatitis. I was like, okay, fine. And then it started spreading. So I had two big patches here. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, and then over the years, um, I got it on, under my eyes. I don't know if you can see under my eyes. Maybe you can zoom it's in the not, camera. Yeah, yeah. Not, not really visible, but, but I have it on my back of my ear. Mm. Yeah. How do I show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got it there. And then here, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. But mm. yeah. So, uh, all this actually came. Uh, the face part, the face part and the neck part, mm. and also the elbow, like here, I do have here, okay. and here. Yeah. So all this came, so I only had these two spots. Mm. All this came right after the vaccination. Mm. Uh, yeah. And you mentioned that you had a flare-up after vaccination? Yeah, so basically the new spots. Uh, I never had it on my leg, now I do have spots on my leg. Uh, but tiny, 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 tiny spots. Like, looks like I just met an accident in it. I see. Yeah. I kind of want to zoom into the moment where mm. you realize that new spots were coming up. Mm. So for example, I for me personally, I'm, I'm not sure for you, mm. but for me personally, um, I had new spots coming up on my face this year. Okay. I had new spots just beside my eye. And I have this new spot over here. I mean, everybody that knows me know that almost half of my face is already covered with psoriasis. Like, mm. it's all, all over my forehead. But when the new spot came up, I felt so agitated, so mm. anxious, um, so nervous. And I felt like a failure because I couldn't contain my psoriasis. Mm. So that's how I felt. What about me? Okay. So, um, as I got new spots, uh, of course, I'd be like, uh, I wasn't, I wouldn't say agitated, mm. but I was like, hey, come on, what the hell's going on? Mm. So, I mean, I see, the thing is, I already knew that it psoriasis already because throughout this journey, mm. I've met people with the same skin condition already. Mm. So, uh, how come? Because, because I never met any of my friends. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you guys talk about your skin condition openly? Yeah. Like, okay, let, 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 tell us more. Okay, so, okay, I have this dude that I know from uh, Tampa. Okay. He's my friend. La. My friend's friend. Tell 
No, not not me. They're yeah. from Kampa, but uh, I have a friend from Kampa. Okay. Yeah, so I would not care. Yeah, but your friend is from Sorsa. Friend is from Kampa. So what happened was, uh, uh, so he's a mutual friend. So his friend of mine, he actually told me, he was like, hey, you know what? Your skin condition, another friend of mine actually has this same condition. And he went to this clinic and uh, this center and uh, he got cured. And because he didn't take care, uh, he just flared up again. So when I actually met him for the first time, I was like, bro, hi, uh, you share the same condition. Oh. I mean, it's nothing wrong. Mm. Because... See, a lot of people come to me and ask me, see, I make music, I go out, I perform, and I meet a lot of new people. Mm. And even you know, people have commented on my Instagram, uh, on my wife's Instagram, like, you know, when they have that ask me a question thing. Yes. And then they'll be like, hey, what happened to Anna's skin? Mm. Some of them refer to me as Anna, because, you know, they must be young kids. <laughs> and they don't know about it. So I'm very much open to tell these kids that, you know, it's psoriasis. Mm. So, uh, in the Indian community, when you tell them psoriasis, they are not all, but some of them who are not educated about it mm. may look at you with a bit of, uh, I wouldn't say disgust, but like they'll be like, oh, shit. Because uh, it's been portrayed in uh, movies and whatsoever as something to be really about. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned that it's been portrayed as something unpleasant, like, you know, skin condition. Yep. But you seem so open with it. No, because I've accepted the fact that I have it and I know that, see, these people don't know and I can't blame them. Yes. So the only thing, next best thing to do is educate them. Yes. And sometimes it gets a bit annoying because... It's very annoying. <laughs> No, but 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 in a way, you see, yeah, I look at it this way, okay. So when I go out and then people come to me and be like, hey bro, what's wrong with your eyes, bro? What's what's going on? And I'll be like, uh no, actually I have a skin problem. Let me see here, here, I got psoriasis. So like, oh yes, bro. You know what? Take this, you rub, bro. You'll go off. Give me one week, bro, you'll go off. I'll be like, day. I know, like, I've been trying this for how many years? Like? You don't come and tell me how to treat my skin, bro. So, but, you know, I can't blame them also because, you see, some of them are telling you how to care. Otherwise, they wouldn't actually care to actually tell you. Yes. See, with the least amount of knowledge that they have, mm -hmm. somebody would have told them something. Yeah. They are coming and telling you out of concern. Yes. Not because of hatred or anything. See, Tatsu till today, uh, I don't get anyone uh, making fun of my skin condition or whatsoever. And even if they do, I don't mind because I love dark humor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, I honestly believe that humor really helps me to live my life better also. It's like, yeah. oh, I have a... Worst fail ever. Okay, let's laugh about it a little. Then I cry. See, like my best friend, he's short. Mm. So like, I make fun about him. All, I mean, make fun of him all the time. I mean, of course, I don't mean it. But you know, it's just humor. And you know, uh, there are times my friends do make fun. See, I have these two spots here, right? Mm. They call it the world map. <laughs> <laughs> they call it the world map, and. Yeah, I'm cool with it. I mean, it's fine. I mean, because like, mm. it is a condition that I'm going to live with throughout the next, throughout the rest of my life, ah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the best thing that I can do is to contain it. Yeah. Yeah. I always get a lot of questions on Instagram asking me about self-acceptance. And when I look at you, your acceptance seems so effortless. If someone come up and ask you, you know, someone just like you, younger version of you, having this skin condition and they are so, they're so bothered by it. And they're so, some, some of us actually are depressed because of, you know, when we have this skin condition, because it's not easy. So I think we have a lot to learn from you when it comes I to that. So what would you share? What would you tell them? Because the, people ask me all the time and I feel like I can't, I'm not the only one who can share, you know, my experience matter, but every, any other person yeah. experience matter too. So what can you share? You know, what can you tell 
people like people who are in the darkness right now mm. you see uh first of all you need to be convinced about your skin condition and i have conditioned myself that yes it is a skin condition but at the end of the day psoriasis is got nothing to do. you can put tons of cream all sorts of ointments on your body but it's not going to go off because at the end of the day it's a gut problem not your skin problem mm -hmm. so your gut has a problem and it's not something that can spread to someone else um what's that word um yeah so yeah it's not something that can spread to someone else and um the only irritating part is when sometimes it just flakes and all that yes yeah so as much as you can keep it moist just try to keep it moist and it look like war marks like you've gone to war and come back you know like you've got scars on your body and it's like yeah cool huh? yeah so that's how i take it i mean i wouldn't say that i'm living in denial but i'm looking at it, looking at it on the brighter side because at the end of the day it's a gut problem and i know for a fact that if i put my heart and soul to this mm. uh see i'll be very honest mm. i've not been the best in taking care of my skin mm. I don't want to come here and say, oh, you know what? I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and everything. I'll tell you all the things that I'm doing, which is actually affecting my skin also. Mm. Yeah, and I know that. So I know if I actually uh, take care of my diet, mm. uh, exercise. See, another reason why I've I'm, I've been getting new spots is because my body has not seen this weight that I am at now. Mm. I've never been at this weight before. I'm 96. Mm. I was 75 before COVID. Then I put on like 20 kgs. I got married. I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I put on like 20 kgs. And you know, that actually affects your psoriasis. So at the end of the day, it's okay. So yeah, that's the thing. Lah. And you are like, I just, you have this ease around you that you are okay with yourself. Yeah. I mean, if I'm not okay with myself, who's going to be? Right? Mm. We all talk about self-love, self-love, self-love. Yes. So if I don't love myself for who I am, then what's the point of me living, right? But so many other people find it so hard to love themselves. So what can you say about that? Mm. Um, see, that's a choice. Mm. It may be a bit difficult in the beginning, but once you come to a see when you start doing see like it's not to say that i'm not doing anything for myself to cure this mm. to try and cure it at least okay so if i'm not doing that mm. and i'm just cool about it mm. then i actually don't care about myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right but i know i'm putting effort mm. to a certain extent not of course like otherwise i'll contradict what i said before this yeah but i am actually putting effort um to get this thing uh to control my skin condition, to, mm. you know, contain it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... I What I mean is actually, when, yeah. when you mention self-love, like choosing yourself, and I think one of the hardest things to achieve is actually being okay with ourselves. Not just doing anything, it's mm. really being okay with, look, I look how I am, yeah. and I'm okay, and I find it in you, and I find it is so rare, I kind of just want to dig a little bit more like how do you be okay with yourself because you also mentioned that someone very close to you is in denial of your condition yeah. and that is also a form of rejection yeah so to share yeah i'll share about that um so basically my dad um, until of late was in denial that psoriasis um and how many years have you had psoriasis already probably what 15 years, 10 to 15 years already. Um, yeah, so like I said, first he thought it was dermatitis and then uh, some other skin condition. Then it came to, you know, mild psoriasis. Mm. So I understand dad being a dad. Mm. He just doesn't want to, you know, uh, hurt my feelings, but he doesn't know mm. that I'm actually, I, I know. It's like, you know, you're telling somebody that, you know, um, you don't have the person has cancer mm. and you're telling the person um you know 
you it's not cancer it's a condition that you have with your body which is called something else okay you know mm. so i knew already it is psoriasis just that you know my dad you know there has been certain times where he's told me like uh, you know when people ask you don't tell it's psoriasis for me i believe that i mean uh, why shouldn't i tell people it's psoriasis i have a skin condition and i wouldn't say i'm proud of it mm. but i can't do anything it's just born with me la mm. it's not that i wanted to have it right mm. so people need to be educated about this because over the years i've been seeing more and more and more and more people with psoriasis yeah uh psoriasis has been i don't know the stats i don't know the data but i have at least 10 to 15 friends with psoriasis yeah it's very common some very bad some they just have it over here yeah. on the you know side of the scalp and all that yeah it's 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 i mean i just want to say right it's not just psoriasis it's also eczema so i have cousins who actually had they had skin problems and then um so like uh, the middle one mm. uh she i think had something like this but she really took care of herself mm. and she's a very fashionable person mm. a very fashionable person she's really talented when it comes to the fashion industry and all that she designs her own clothes and all that so yeah she's very talented so when she had a skin condition see i didn't know about it back then mm-hmm. until uh, you know after a certain time you know you get to know that okay yeah so i think she went vegetarian for some time and she really controlled her diet and blah 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 and what not so she's managed to contain her skin problem or in fact i think i would say cure it already mm. she's a person who loves to have tattoos mm. so now she looks got like tattoos all over her body she looks like some indian mm. cardi b nikki minaj kind of this fella la this cousin of yours <laughs> yeah so she's managed to contain that and then the last one has eczema mm. she's like 11 or 12 years old um sometimes it's very sad to see because uh you know eczema on the other hand it's itchy yeah so this is also itchy what but mine doesn't really itch that much i don't scratch mine doesn't also uh, but when i eat once you know why it'll be a bit itchy lah yeah yeah but usually it's okay yeah usually it's okay lah yeah so but eczema it's itchy all the time is um so so what i understand is eczema skin is more fragile than psoriasis um, psoriasis skin yeah. so unfortunately unfortunately that that, yes. that happens la so mm-hmm. when a kid has that you know you tell a kid not to scratch so yeah cuz yeah la they don't know right so yeah so what was i saying again why did you were saying that your cousin yeah so psoriasis you know people around me have this skin problems i have i have an uncle who has this he got it like he's like 4 years older than me and then pop he got it like i think around 4 or 5 years ago i think and she sounds really bad mm. and it yeah it seems like you have friends around you that have skin condition i have, have family family members around you have skin condition and interestingly you also mentioned that your father mm. is in denial of your condition now i think he has accepted but okay. before this yes he was in denial let's zoom into that all right because i know and i'm very aware that a lot of people face the same situation yep. where the people who are closest to them mm. they deny their condition yeah and i think it is a very painful experience to go through i mean it depends how sensitive i mean you are. yeah i mean i i would i would i would um agree with that there have been times where uh i don't know like i just felt like um why can't you just accept the fact mm. so You mentioned that your father mm. is in denial of a condition. Yeah. And may I know how did he show the denial? Like, what are the actions and things that he say? See, uh, there were times where um, he tell me like when I go out, mm. he'll be like, "Hey, why well, anybody ask? Uh, don't I mean just don't tell them it's psoriasis. Don't know? put a put, don't put a name on it. Yeah, don't put a name on it. Yeah." Mm. So yeah for me I'd be like why mm. and how old were you back then 
It was like until like maybe two three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Because for me, is like I said, I've accepted. So anybody asks, I'll just tell. Yeah, it is versus. Mm. And I think now he's also accepted that. I think he knew, but just didn't want to accept. But mm. yeah, no lah, my dad just being caring, mm. and yeah, only child syndrome. Mm. Just doesn't work. Yeah. And um, I kind of wanna zoom a little bit more into this. Mm. It's also because. My mom mm. also asked me to cover up before, mm. and even though we know that is with good intention, because yeah. sometimes they don't want people to look at us in a different way. Sometimes the world can be a little mean. bit unfriendly, yeah. a little bit mean to us when we look different, and they just want to protect us. But at the same time, when I, you know, when I, when I look back mm. at that very moment when it happened, I. Also felt a little bit angry mm. because why do I have to cover up just because some other people don't accept me? Correct, very true. You know, and and at the same time, when someone I love so dearly, someone that brings me into the world, actually asks me to cover up or you know not mm. even put a name to it. Yeah. Do you think it's also because they carry the guilt? Um. See, I don't know if I personally feel that. Uh, I've never said this, but I think this is the first time I'll say it. I think the only two people that I've spoken to this, I mean, to about this, is to my mom and my wife. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think like my dad. Guilt wise, I don't know, but mm. see, in the whole journey, the whole process, he told me to go to this place, that place, blah 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 blah. Mm. Some places didn't work and all that. So maybe he feels that uh, all these medicines that were tried mm. didn't kind of work, mm. and maybe there might be a certain amount of guilt there. I don't know. I don't know, mm. but I mean, who am I to tell? Mm. Isn't it? Yeah, I've never actually spoken about that. Mm. But maybe there might be a tinge of guilt because, like, let's say if I have a kid mm. and my kid has the same condition and I was not aware about it, and I tell my kid to go to this doctor, that doctor, take this medicine, take this cream, and then sometimes the doctor tells some things. You know what? Don't listen to the doctor. I know mm. that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, and it's not curing. Yeah. I would definitely feel a little bit shit about myself, lah. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being so open about this. <laughs> okay. Mm. Let's talk about your career. Okay. You're an artist, mm -hmm. and you are in the public eye. You have sixty nine thousand followers on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. How do you navigate that? You know, like being so open and people ask, keep asking you about your condition. Uh, actually, okay, so um, people have asked, but not many have asked. Mm -hmm. I think after this podcast comes out, mm -hmm. then people might be like, eh, "What is happening?" You know, yeah. I don't know, but people have asked. So because I've uploaded pictures um, where my skin is visible, especially behind my. Mm -hmm. Uh, scalp, mm. my ears, and all that. Mm. Um, yeah, and uh, certain music videos that I've acted in, my own music videos, you can actually see I have a skin condition. Mm. But just that might not be so visible. Mm. Um, and then when I go for shoots, mm. sometimes uh, the makeup artist would be like, <laughs> You know, sometimes when you go to TV shows and all that, yeah. they want you to put makeup on before you go on. I'm like, yeah. no, I can't. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I'm going to put makeup on, correct me if I'm wrong, this thing they put here, it's called the concealer, right? Yes, yes, concealer. I know. <laughs> yeah. Job. Yeah, so the concealer thing makes it very dry. Yeah. Yeah, so I tell them, no, I don't put yes. makeup. I don't put makeup at all. Like, uh, they say, then the makeup artist would be like, you know, it's okay, I can cover it up, don't worry, I've seen skin conditions like this. I'm like, I know about my skin better. 
Mm. Yeah. So you don't have to, you know, tell me what to do. It's okay. I look how I am. Mm. That's fine. I don't need to look enhanced on TV. Mm. You know? How do you respond to that though? It's okay. I can cover up for you. How do you respond? I'll just tell them no. And a lot of people find it hard to say no. I'll just tell them no lah. I'll just tell them no. Because I know if I'm going to put it on, it's going to look even worse. Um, the right term is keiki. What do you call it? Keiki. Keiki means? Yeah, keiki means um, macam the thing accumulate lah. Ah, uh, oh, keiki, keiki. Yeah, 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 keiki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. keiki. keiki so yeah. when the camera shines, you can actually yeah. actually even more obvious. Obvious, it look white there for no reason. Like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So then the, that, that's the thing, I tell them no. Like, and once it becomes cakey, then it starts to flake. Yeah. So I wouldn't want that. Yeah. Because, I mean, I have to take care of my skin lah. So yeah, I've told no to makeup artists and, um, I mean, I think it's something where people have to get used to. Mm. See, I've had this thought before also, like, you know, I want to act. I want to, you know, do blah, blah, blah. Like, artists you know, la, you know, everybody, artists. Yeah. Like, you know, I want to have six packs and go shirtless. Wow. And, you know, do a fight scene or something like that. But there have been times I'd be like, no, but before that, I got to cure this. Yeah. Otherwise, how are they going to do that? How am I going to do that? Mm. I mean, we have AI and everything, but I don't want to be putting AI on my body and taking off whatever is there. Mm. But... I don't know, I have the hope where uh, people are actually going to accept the skin condition uh, more in the near future because more people are actually coming out mm. and telling people that there is a condition called psoriasis mm. and you know what, this is what it is, we got to live with it mm. and this is how it is. It is what it is. Yes. And yeah. I want to kind of... Um, emphasize a little bit what you just said. What you're actually doing is advocating for yourself. Mm. And it is so powerful because so many people find it so hard to do. Mm. And you specifically mentioned that people have to be okay with it. Mm. And a lot of times, people like us, we tend to hide, we tend to cover up because we don't want to cause any unwanted attention or any inconvenience for other people. But for you is, you said that, you know, people have to be okay with it. And I just find it so refreshing mm. because I met so many people and they are, they are so, not negative, but more, um, they don't really, they don't have the courage to take initiative, to step out yeah. of their comfort zone and show up as themselves. And you just do it so effortlessly. Have to la. Otherwise, like I said, we only live one life. Yeah. As much as I want to have fun, as much as I want to do all kinds of things, you know, I just want to do it because like, just because of my skin condition, I just don't want to be sitting at home and just thinking about it and not going out and doing something, like doing nothing. I want to go out. I want to, I love music. I love performing in front of a crowd. Um, I love acting in a music video. I would do that because why not? And I find it so beautiful that you live for yourself and not other people. You, you really claim your space. This is who I am. This is how I look. And this is what I like to do. And I'm going to go for it. And yeah. I find it so admirable for people who have a skin condition. Because I took so long to be okay with my condition mm -hmm. too. And to see it in you, I just find it... And, and you do it so effortlessly. For me, I, I, I had to really fake it for a long time before I actually am okay with it. Mm -hmm. And even... If I say I'm okay, some days I'm still not okay. So do you have days that you're not okay? Mm, yeah, there have been times where when it starts flaking, mm. then I'll be like, oh, shit. Okay. So that's when I actually tell my wife, like, you know, I think uh, because there are certain days where I'll be very honest, I forget to take my medicines. Mm. Like, yeah, my homeopathy medicines. Mm. Not mentioned, I do take homeopathy treatment, mm. therapy, homeo homeopathy, yeah. Yes. So, this is little, small, white, white, white medicines, mm. you know. Yeah, and uh, there are certain days where I forget and 
There are certain days where, see, my line is such where I go out, I party. Mm. Um, yeah, and um, of course, um, alcohol actually is not uh, recommended mm. for people with psoriasis. People with psoriasis. Mm. But that was the first thing I kind of asked every doctor. Because mm. I love to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, then they answer me like you know you can have moderately and blah 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 and everything. So for me that's but me being me sometimes it's no moderation lah. Let's mm-hmm. go all out lah. But at the same time I feel like you know like yeah. I said you're low you only live once. Yeah. So what do you do when you're not okay? What do I do when I'm not okay? Hmm. Mm. What do I do when I'm not okay? So I don't do anything like this. You know, um, there's nothing much that I can actually do. Mm. I just talk to my wife and just tell her like, you know what? I think I need to be a bit more serious in treating my condition. And yeah, I, I need to be a bit more in control of my senses, mm. not to go out and <laughs> eat whatever I want to eat. Yeah, uh, the, the 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 saving grace is uh, to a certain point is because like I'm vegetarian. Mm. I don't know whether that really helps so much or not. Mm. But as from what I know, what all the doctors that I've met, mm. everything they have in common, one thing that they've all told me is that, thank God you're a vegetarian because meat apparently is not good for especially red meat. Mm. It's not good for psoriasis, mm, mm. Uh, people with psoriasis skin mm. and all that. So I'm like, okay. But at the same time, like being a vegetarian, um, looking at it, uh, there are certain, there are a lot of things that you cannot eat also, like brinjal, mm, mm. Uh, some vegetables that you cannot eat. Yeah, even if you, yeah, mm. even if you're going to eat it, moderation, like mm. very small portion just for the sake of it. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I realized that stress also is a... Yes. Yeah. Definitely. When you're stressed, you know, it just flares up a bit more. Mm. When I'm happy, uh, it goes off. Mm. So there was this point of time where in 2020, 2020 2021, mm. I think, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, 2021. So one of my songs did really well. Mm. Yeah. And I think that was my first... Uh, or is my first song to hit like a million streams on, on Spotify and all that. So I was very happy about it. Mm. And I realized at that point of time, um, you know, because me being happy, mm. uh, it started just going off. Ooh. Like mm-hmm. the two big patches I told you, mm-hmm. now it's just like I have an outer layer. Mm. The middle, I've got my original skin back. Wow. I think I showed you the other day, like when yes. back, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I've got my original skin back, but at the same time, see, I also have it in my head that mm. it's gone off, but it's not cured. Mm. I have this condition; it's going to stay with me till my last breath. Mm. So this part has been contained. Mm. Now I'm going to contain the rest. Mm. So what did I do back then? Mm. So I made a hit song. Mm. I was happy. Mm. So I'm trying to find ways to be happy. Yes. And positive, be positive, be positive all the time. Because uh, positive thoughts, mm. I believe, mm. helps a lot. Yes, of course. And just kind of want to go back to what you mentioned. Um, because I, my, I asked you, you know, from your answer, you actually show us that when we are not okay, we can actually transfer that energy to action. Yeah. And I just find it so... Practical. Yeah. Mm. It's like when you're having fever, that's also a condition. You've got to do something about it. You can't sit down and whine about it, right? And you mentioned your wife a lot. Yeah. Tell us how you met her. So, uh, she wouldn't agree to this, but she's a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... What's her name? Her name's Nirosha. Nirosha, so, are you a fan? <laughs> yes. I'll deny that now. But she slid into my DMs and then like... Oh. I was just, ah. <laughs> so actually, yeah, so she actually shared a song that I did with my dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was during MCO. 
covid and uh, what happened was uh we started talking online and uh from texting on instagram we exchanged numbers and then to wake up calls and blah 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 and everything and then one day she decides not decides so she decides to go for a drive so it was covid at that point of time but you could travel within a uh, 15 km radius so it's like you know i'm going to take a drive and board so it's like you know what come to she's from charas i'm from taman mulawati mm-hmm. yeah so she was like um i'm going to take a drive i said come to mulawati so we've not met mm-hmm. ben mai uh, so she comes and then uh, my dad my mom both knew that i was so they kind of know who i'm talking to and all that. i said a lot of stuff with my, my mom and crush So then I actually told my dad about this girl that I'm talking to who's my wife now mm-hmm. and um yeah so she came and uh my dad was like hey somebody's outside the house I was like yeah it's that girl that I was talking to he was like hey call her in lah <laughs> my mom was like meeting, huh? meeting oh my god <laughs> so me being me uh how friend put makeup all dressed up all and uh-huh. came. you know it's been presentable lah yeah Me at that point of time, uh-huh. COVID, lockdown, couldn't cut my hair, looked uh-huh. like a grizzly bear. Oh. Came out with my black shorts and black hoodie, just like. Yo, what's up? Yeah, I was like, you know what? My dad's calling you and he's coming. I'll be so scared. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about that at that time. Because like, I didn't know, I mean, like, I'm going to get married. If anyone at that point of time told me that in two years' time, you're going to get married, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have believed them. Because... Mm. Um yeah I never thought I would want to get married like why I just want not because of my skin condition or anything I was just like you know I want to be that guy when I'm like free spirit guy yeah free spirit guy when I'm 40 45 on a yacht with like 20 30 hot models and I'm like yeah man I'm living my life and then reality hits two years down the road i get married mm. and yeah here i am now happy yeah of course i am <laughs> can't be better so yeah because another thing is because uh, she understands my condition and actually see uh that's another thing uh i'll be very open about this i've been out on many dates and um uh i've met a lot of people mm-hmm. and uh like i said some of them have asked like you know do you have a skin condition or whatsoever i tell them like yeah this is my skin condition mm. and that's all most of them actually accepted it like yeah i didn't have a problem like going out with a girl on a date like mm. and then she looks at me like oh my god you got some skin condition under your eye your ears behind there got some problem mm. i'm not going to come back and you know we're not going to meet again no it's never been like that mm. they've never looked at me in disguise or whatsoever mm. um yeah i think that's always been i, I think um your bravery your courage is effortless right Um and I think I also think that we also have to give a bit credit to our luck. Mm. Honestly for me, I also met a lot of kind people. But I also am aware of the stories, you know, you know what few my followers share with me like for example, I have this follower and I think she has been with this partner for I think 4 years. They were going to get married and I think towards the end the partner decided that he couldn't accept you know her mm. having a skin condition mm-hmm. maybe because it became more severe okay. towards, you know mm-hmm. yeah what what can you say to people like that <laughs> their loss mm. i mean i mean the person who left it's their loss mm. cuz your skin doesn't define who you actually can be like you know that person can, could be a really nice person mm-hmm. and blah 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 yeah maybe the skin is not flawless or whatsoever la but maybe the person's heart might be flawless i mean that's a statement that everyone would say <laughs> you know, to be yeah, i don't know la, but honestly if you ask me uh why these people leave also is because they're not aware about what this condition is mm. and honestly if you ask me if somebody is not going to appreciate you Mm. for who you are and leave you because of your skin condition or whatever condition you may have mm. 
that happen for good. God is by your side. I'm I'm a believer and I believe that God is by your side because God knows that if you're going to get married to that particular person, that person's probably going to leave you halfway and that's a whole new problem altogether. Yes. So better it happen before la. before then mm. yeah. Like my wife she knew that I had a skin problem. Yes. And uh How do you communicate to her actually? How did you have that conversation? I don't oh, find it so hard to have that conversation. I was, I think the first time I met, mm. or I think, if, I don't know when was the first time I actually told her, but I just told her like, one day, I was like, hey, I actually have this condition called psoriasis, so yeah, I have like two patches here and all that. Mm. And then, yeah, when she saw it, then she was like, oh, this is the condition you're talking about. And I was like, yeah, this is the condition I'm talking about. I'm taking treatment and uh, yeah, it's something. Then that's when I explained to them, like, uh. you know, it's actually a gut problem. So mm. that's where the education part happens. Mm. And or some sometimes yeah. when like I meet new people and all that, they ask me what it is. So before they tell me to take any medication, I tell them about like, yeah, you know what? This is actually a gut problem. And yeah, I'm taking treatment for this, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to this doctor and everything. It's a long story, but I've heard it tell many people. <laughs> Thank you for educating. Yeah. No, you have to lah. Otherwise, nobody's going to know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what What does your wife do that, you know, that you know, show that she supports you? Mm, she reminds me to take my medicines. Hmm? Um, yeah, she reminds me to take my medicines. Uh, there have been times where... She's helped me apply cream. Oh. Um, yeah, all that kind of stuff, la. Like, and uh, I don't know. It's, she she doesn't really like. You know, sometimes it can be annoying when somebody keeps looking. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, whatsoever. She's never done that. Like, mm. let's say I get a new spot. She's pretty chill with it. Yeah, I feel the same way for with my partner too. Yeah, she's pretty chill. Like. Okay, there's a new spot. Okay, so okay, yeah, just get it contained. Yeah, yeah, I still love you, lah. Okay, yeah, la. just get it contained, lah. That's all, lah. You know, take care, lah. And I mean, there have been times where she's also told me, like, you know, you, you gotta, you know, buck up on your, uh, you yeah, you gotta buck up on your like um journey of containing it, where yeah. you need to be more, you know, uh, good with your medicines, co- more consistent, mm. and all that. Yeah. You know, the, the the smallest things will actually mean a lot. I find it so fascinating that um, really, like, you do everything so easily where a lot of other people really face, like, a huge mountain being well, okay with... I it. guess, I guess, um, it's also because, like, see, some of them... Um, they are unaware about their condition. Mm. See, another thing I feel is that, you see, when you have a condition like this, mm. taking care of this condition is very costly. Yeah. Very costly. Yes. Because dermatologists and creams and also treatment and everything is very expensive. Yes. See, I know people who can't afford all this. Yeah. So, uh, given a choice... Who wouldn't want to contain this, right? Mm. But they don't have a choice. Mm. Mm. So because they can't afford treatment, they end up being even more depressed. Yeah. Mm. And because they're depressed, already because of that, mm. they don't go out. And they like it depressed? Huh? Yeah. So it's sad that um, you know uh, treatments are very, very expensive. Mm. It's not cheap at all. Yeah. I'll be very open. I spend around like 1, 1.5k, sometimes 2k mm. a month to contain yeah. this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. And that, some, that might be somebody's monthly salary. Yeah. And, you know, they can't just spend everything on this. Yes. You know, it's difficult for people. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if any... I, I really hope if any doctors or dermatologists, uh, people who know how to treat this. Probably if you're watching this podcast, um, it's not that, you know, some people who don't want to, not they don't want to pay, they can't afford. 
um you know if you can help these kind of people um help lah help lah <laughs> just just yeah you know mm. god will bless you ah mm. yeah thank you so much no problem i think it has been a very fruitful chat thank you for having me on this no, thank you know you. i've been a from the first time i saw you on instagram yeah i was like <laughs> hey this girl has the same condition and then the second time i saw you i saw you at uh, the ayur center oh yes yeah, yes that's when i saw you but i think you were rushing so i couldn't really talk to you yes. but i actually wanted to come and talk to you and actually ask you about i remember that time you told me you were planning to make a trip to india and all that and i actually went yeah <laughs> so I met you then. Then I uh, saw your Instagram. You do belly dancing also, right? Wow, well, that was like years ago. Don't stop, lah. Just do. No, really. <laughs> you really just do. I I wanted to be a professional dancer last time, but now dance for fun, lah, in the bathroom. <laughs> no, you know what? Do it because dance. Mm. I mean, I'm not a dancer. Mm-hmm. I do dance mm. when I'm a bit. <laughs> tipsy yeah. but yeah, not not proper lah but you know I mean at the end of the day dance is about body movement and you know steps and blah 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 and everything you know your skin don't matter yeah yeah mm-hmm. if uh, somebody many if people with different ethnicities colors of skin can be dancers I consider myself an ethnicity by myself as well wow that's powerful bro <laughs> I mean, we want family, lah. You yeah. have a condition that I have. Yeah. I, 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 I feel for you. You feel for me. Yes. And as much as we can help each other, we help each other. That's what we do for each other, right? Yeah. yeah. That's why I do this podcast too. Yeah. <laughs> the more we know, the more we want to do, lah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Thank you so much. For Thank you for having. Me. Thank you for giving so much, and um, I think personally, I've learned a lot, and I'm really, really sure that you know. Anyone who's listening to this, they will have a few takeaways. And um, before we end, do you want to say anything to just end it nicely? <laughs> uh, thank you for having me, first of all. And uh, to those of you who are watching this, uh, I just hope my journey, I mean, with psoriasis, um, for those who have, I hope it gives you some comfort and some confidence if you don't have. Mm-hmm. to go out and do your thing mm-hmm. and for those who don't know about psoriasis no you know get to know about this condition uh feel free to share this podcast with your friends and family because at the end of the day it's awareness and yeah it's a way of life yes thank you very much thank you thank you say, <laughs> say bye say bye bye, bye.